So we have capital P. What does capital P stand for? Perimeter of the what? Of the base. Capital P stands for the perimeter of the base. So on a triangle, that's adding up all the sides, one, two, and three. On a rectangle, that's adding up one, two, three, four, all the sides on the rectangle, depending on what shape your base is. H stands for height from base to base. So on a cylinder, that's from a circle to a circle. So if your thing's facing that way, it's from here to here. If it's standing upright, that's just from there to there. On a rectangular prism, it's always bottom to top. So from bottom to top, there's your height. Now from a triangular prism, it's always from triangle to triangle. Morning. Good morning. From triangle to triangle, that's your height. From triangle to triangle. What does capital B stand for? Area. Area of the base. Area of the base. <coughs> On a, if my base is a circle, I use pi r squared. If my base is a rectangle, I use length times width. If my base is a triangle, I use one half base times height. Well, look at your formula chart where it says area. All of those formulas are right there for whatever shape your base is. And then people at home, you can always, I've, I've sent formula charts to you, so. Okay, we need to know where to look though, because I don't want you to get to test day. You're like, where do I look on the formula chart? So everyone should see on the formula chart where it says area and for a circle what the area is, for a triangle what the area is, for a rectangle what the area is. Okay, so if you want, screenshot this. This is good information. If you don't, that's fine. That's up to you. Okay. There are two types of surface area, lateral and total. Lateral surface area is the area of all the sides, not including the bases, not including the bases. Total surface area is the area of all the sides, including the bases. For a cylinder, here's your formulas for lateral and total surface area. Rectangular prism, here's your formulas. Triangular prism, here's your formulas. Another great thing to screenshot, beautiful information. Beautiful. Now for a cylinder, I don't really think we need to do an example because it's pretty straightforward. But I don't know, could I say that, but then I don't know. Um, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it fully out, but we are going to talk about what information it's giving us. Okay, so right now, what I want from you is I want everyone to know what these two numbers represent. So in your head right now. I want you to know what those two numbers represent. Now, my first period in my high school class, they said to me, they said to me, why do we have to show work? I almost cried, not really. But I don't understand. They're like, they looked, they said, we're just, it's on the computer. Why would we show work? I said, are you serious? What do you mean? Hi, why not show work? I'm sorry, I can't eat, I don't even like to do this stuff just looking at it and using my calculator. You need to still show work. You're gonna have scratch paper. You need to still show work. So five and seven eighths, what does this represent? The height. the height. But I wanna write this as a decimal. I need everyone, everyone, everyone to figure out what this is as a decimal. Because some of you have all year long have just waited on other people to give the answer. It is not benefiting you at all. So I need everyone to have Desmos. Everyone figure out what this is as a decimal. <clears throat> to do that, you would first figure out what this fraction is, seven divided by eight. So our seven over eight is seven divided by eight. So seven divided by eight is 0.875. So this is 5.875 centimeters. That simple. I don't put it in the calculator together because it's not gonna give me that. Okay, what does this 4.5 represent? This is the diameter. 
And we know that because it's all the way across. But I don't want diameter. I never want diameter. I don't want diameter. I want radius. So how do I find it? Divided by two. Divided by two. So when I do 4.5 divided by two, that will give me 2.25. So the radius is 2.25. Okay, and so it's pretty straightforward from here. You're just plugging in your height and you're plugging your radius into the formula. So we're not, I'm not gonna do that out. Okay, so I'm moving on from this example unless there's a question. So S equals two times pi times 2.25 times 5.875 plus two times pi times 2.25 squared. Actually, just go ahead and put in the calculator. Let's see if we all get the same answer. Because <clears throat> also what I'm noticing, and this isn't to put anybody down, but a lot of the students who are just coming back or just now really getting into doing this don't know how to put stuff in the calculator. So I just want to make sure we all know how to do it. Sorry. So this is the time when you're like, Ms. Patterson, I don't know how to put in a calculator or key. Please help me. This is the time to start saying, speaking up for yourself. Yes, ma'am. So the high is Mm -hmm. So um, you divide by seven and then seven five and then mm -hmm. five mm -hmm. so then, like, why is the five point eight seven five? Because seven eighths is point eight seven five. Mm -hmm. So when y'all put in Desmos, did you get 114.86, blah blah blah? Okay, and I still have people, which is okay, as long as we're understanding. Some people don't know how to round still. So if I wanted to round to the nearest tenths place, that's one decimal place. To do that, I don't. it's not just 114.8. Because there's a six after the eight, it makes the eight go up to a nine. So if I wanted to round to the nearest tenths place, it would be 114.9. Okay. Rectangular prisms. Try to draw as a beautiful rectangular prism as you possibly can. Does anyone remember what I said to do on these problems? The first thing you should probably do? Draw out the base, okay? Take the time to draw the base out. And here the base is always the bottom and the top, so I'm just gonna draw that bottom out. And I'm gonna label this as my base. What are the dimensions of the base? Four and nine. By drawing out the base, I can easily figure out the P and the B because both of those have to do with the base. So if you remember how to do this, do it, do it. Okay, capital P stands for the perimeter of the base. So I'm looking only at the base I drew out. How do I find the perimeter of that? Add up all the sides. So I'm only, I'm not looking at this anymore. I'm looking at what I drew out. Nine plus nine plus four plus four. What is it? 26. 26, thank you. So my parameter is 26. H stands for height from base to base. 
So what is my height from bottom to top? 10.5. This is the number that has nothing to do with the base. So I know that this is my height of my prism, 10.5. So my height is 10.5. And then capital B stands for? Capital B stands for? Area of the base. Because my base is a rectangle, I look on my formula chart if I forget how to find the area. But Emily already told us it's the length times width. So nine times four, which is 36. So I found all my information. All right, and when y'all put them in the calculator, did y'all get 345? Awesome, awesome. And this is total surface area. We're just doing total, because if you can do total, you can always do lateral. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I always like when you do it. So, um, the, first, so the first step is the base, so... Um, the square is like nine, nine, four, four. So you add those together and then you do the answer. And then the second part is high. So then you just take the height and the mm -hmm. And then for the third step, you do length times width, which is um, nine times four. Mm -hmm. And then you do um, the calculator and perfect. Why is it actually like, why is there two? Because there's two bases, the bottom and the top, so that's why it's like two times B, because it's the area of both of the bases. So like all the area? Um, if you're doing total surface area. So like my suggestion is always write the formula down and then follow the formula, always. All right, last one, and then we're done. Triangular prism, triangular prism, do your best to draw it out. Okay, hey, what's the first thing I always want you to do? Draw out the base. Draw out the base. On a triangular prism, the triangles are the base. Not this rectangle here. The triangles are the base. So when I draw out my triangle, both the sides are five and five, and the bottom one is eight, and then the height of my triangle is six. Bless you. So let's start with the capital P first, which is the perimeter of the base. I'm only looking at what I drew out. How would I find the perimeter of the base? And what are my sides? Five, five, and eight. Awesome. So five plus five plus eight, and it's 18 like trip set. Let me pause. Because triangular prisms is the one we struggle with the most. 
Anyone questioning why the uh, perimeter of the base is 18? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, this is the part where it treats people up. That H value. Remember, H is the height from base to base. From triangle to triangle. So what is the height? The height is 10. So just remember this height right here has nothing to do with the base. It's the number that's not being used. So my height is 10. So that's how tall the prism is. If I think of it as it's on its side right now, and I would flip it over to make it on where it's supposed to be. Okay, and then capital B stands for the area of the base. I'm looking at my formula chart. I know my base is a triangle. So I'm looking at the formula of the area of a triangle. And the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Remember, I'm only looking at the base. I'm only looking at what I drew out. I'm not looking at anything else. So then B equals one half. What is the base of my triangle? A, that means the bottom. So the bottom of my triangle is eight. And then what's the height of my triangle? Six. So then that's 24. So now that we found everything, we can find the total surface area. Yes, sir. Um, so with the um, with two B, mm -hmm. so with uh, prism, the uh, the base is is cut in half, right? So so then it multiplies it by two again. If you understand it, then yes, it because you you're seeing that. It, it's the same thing if you don't put the one half. So if you if you understand it, I don't care. But I don't want to say I don't say it out loud because it'll confuse people. So yeah, so you recognize that technically you're like what's the point in doing the half part? But the it it yeah. I'm not gonna say it out loud just because I know it will confuse some people. But anyways, you should get two hundred and twenty eight. But yeah, so if you notice that, then yes, trip, do it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so one half B, B, little b stands for the base or the bottom of my base. So this is my base. So I'm only looking at the base. So the bottom of it is eight. So that's why that's the little b. And the height of my triangle is six. That's why that's the H. Because I'm only looking at my base, because it's capital B stands for the area of the base. So that's why I know I'm not using, I'm not looking at this. I'm only looking at what I drew out over here. So, one half, eight times six, yeah. Because that's the formula for a triangle on the formula chart. So since my base is a triangle, I use one half base times height. So on the look at your formula chart, if you go to area, and of a triangle, yeah. it's the formula is one half base times height. So one half. One half bottom of triangle times the height of the triangle. So like that's like that's in the equation. Like it's yes. like one half times. Yeah. Half times. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was confused because I thought you meant it was one half. 